Ever built a website and thought, this is nice, but it needs something, something to make it pop? So you hit up Google, or let's be real, ChatGPT, hoping for inspiration to make your website the best looking thing on the internet. And then, like a bolt of genius, you stumble across this one effect. Suddenly, your imagination goes wild. Your site isn't just good anymore, it's legendary, fame, fortune, and that sweet dopamine hit of admiration. Just one animation away. You pop up your website code and start asking ChatGPT how to do it. Let's see here. All right, so it should be pretty straightforward. You create a code pen instead to quickly try it out. Add some styling to the code pen to make it look nice. Place the content in the middle, add a clean font and some colors. Sweet. Create an H1 tag with a class typewriter and add the CSS for that class and the animations. Let's see what you have there. You have zero in width and an animation that changes it to 100%. Together with overflow hidden, the text that is outside of the width should be out of sight. Then you have a border to the right which simulates a thin cursor. The second animation seems to be there to make it blink. Save it and we'll see what happens. Okay, so it's kind of working. If you squint and pretend the blinking is intentional, you might convince yourself it's cool. At least you have a blinking cursor and the text is revealed after some time. But I'm not very fond of the entire word blinking and even less that it disappears after the animation is done. Mistakes were made. Consult the oracle again and see if it can redeem itself. This time we ask it to make a better typewriter effect. Mm, a new class and a change in the HTML. Interesting. All right, we're leveling up now. Pop back into the code pen and update your HTML. The cursor is now a different tag. That could probably fix the issue where the entire word was blinking. Add the new class called cursor. It seems like we're getting a wider cursor this time around. Same animation and we're aligning it to the bottom in the inline block. Save it. Let's see what its JavaScript is doing. First, we have some constants and variables. Two for the elements, one for the text output, and also an index. Looking at the function below, we can see it will point at which character to add next to the h1 element. You have a type text function, which will run until your index has added all the characters. It adds one character, increments the index, and then calls the type text function recursively, with a delay of a random number between 50 and 200 milliseconds. Think of it like a typewriter. Each character gets tapped in one at a time and the delay adds the human typing vibe. Hit save and so close. But you're not really satisfied yet. Trust me, the cursor should not be below the text. And once a character has been placed, it should not move. Let's clean it up and fix these issues. Put the text we're going to use into the HTML because, you know, we're not monsters. Let's make sure everyone, JavaScript or not, can see the text. In your JavaScript, you could fetch it from the h1 element and put it into a variable. We use that variable in the type text function and put the characters into a span that will be positioned exactly on top of the h1 tag. Make the text hidden in the h1 tag so that our span characters are visible. We can move the cursor into a pseudo class so that our HTML looks clean. Let's absolutely position it to the right of the span. Finish it up by calling the type text function when everything has loaded properly so that we don't start running the script before we can see anything. Now everything's aligned, nothing's jumping around and we can finally have a typewriter effect we can be proud of. Whew. Thanks for sticking around, I really hope you found this tutorial helpful, or at least entertaining. Before I wrap up, I have a quick announcement. Over the past few months, I have been working on a project called happypanda.ai. It's a tool that helps developers collect and analyze feedback from their websites. Coolest part? It takes that feedback and gives you a weekly email with actionable insights, like having your very own product manager. Plus, you can still analyze the feedback yourself if you're into that sort of thing. This project is really close to my heart because, like many of you, I juggle a lot. Full-time work, family, and now a one-year-old at home. My goal with Happy Panda is to eventually free up enough time to focus more on creating content like this for you. If you think happypanda.ai could be useful to you, 
or someone you know, please help me spread the word. Your support could genuinely make a huge difference. That's all from me today. Thanks again for watching. Take care and I'll see you in the next one.